All right, so I'm cutting off that lip I told you I was going to cut off on the bottom. You see my wide array of implements of destruction. I got a hand air saw. I got a sawzall. I got a smaller hand battery operated sawzall. Two different uh, cutoff wheels. This one because it's got more horsepower. That one because it can get in closer. Um, so whatever it takes. But anyway, let me just go around for comparison so you can see real quick. The difference i'm standing at the same about the same height you can see uh this side here with the flange lower flange still in place and this side here looks dramatically different except for the fact that the inner profile really hasn't changed we've just cut away that um, lower pinch weld flange um, so let me show you that real quick, what that looks like here. Oh my gosh, getting down on the floor, not a lot of fun. So you see there's still material left. The back wall of the, um, the pinch weld is still there. And you can see it's about maybe three eighths to a half an inch still hanging down in that direction, which makes us about, about an inch and an eighth from here to here. So I'll have to, I'll have to come back and and fill that in all the way along to the back of the car. Now, all I did was eliminate this piece, which since I'm not connecting to it, no strength there, but anyways, all of this material here is now gone. Um, so this didn't really reduce any strength other than the fact that if I'd left it in there, I'd have another inch that I could have created a larger profile here but anyways, um, the hard part of this is when we get back to the back here, because there's a lot going on in here. Let me see if I can get down a little lower. All right, so you could see what I was talking about as far as there's a lot of strength. There's this, uh, this member here, across here and up. And, and this is all double walled over here because this is the jack point right here. And you see this over here. This is where you have, usually have a little bit of a uh, jack stub sticking down here. And this is all doubled up over here. And of course this is all very complicated over here to cut through. You really, using a sawzall, you'll run into all of this stuff in the back here. So you kind of have to figure out where you want to make your cuts with what tool at what time. So it's back and forth with a lot of the stuff. And this is because this fades out to nothing over here. It's just got this little rounded lip, which brings this off the wall a little bit. You see now that I'm flush with the bottom of my frame rail, I can go in here and I can weld all of this back to up to here to this frame rail before I add a piece of metal here to create the new pinch weld. And so it follows all the way out, right out to the wheel hole here. And I'll close this all in, of course, too. That in. But anyway, I thought I'd show you how dramatic that looks just from getting rid of that one little flange that sticks out like this. Suddenly it disappears, and that's essential for the car the new the old car to look right because it has a very small rocker by comparison and the pinch well like i said rolls way underneath on that car and um i'll bring you over here see if you can see it see if there's enough light over here see where this is your upper pinch weld here on the bottom of this car the pinch weld is way underneath you're way over here. So if I had a pinch wall that was out here, uh, this uh, you could see it from you know a standing position. So anyway, just thought I'd show you that. Okay, so I just wanted to show you the final area that I had to trim away, and that would be this area right across here. Now I may end up cutting more out of here depending on how it lines up with the old body, but for now I just wanted to cut it off flush and take a look at what the structure looks like under there. Okay, so here's the remnants of the original frame rail. 
Now I'll go along and uh, this will be welded up over here and then I'll cap this all off depending on how high up I end up finally trimming it. But right now it's just flush. Um, I went ahead and welded along here so that I can connect this kick out, which is just sheet metal, but that's your frame. So uh, welded along here. So now that this kick out is connected to the frame rail, yeah, there was only a couple of, you know, spot welds holding this on there anyway, but so that's a little more substantial. And uh, eventually I'll come back and I'll cap this off also. Um, anyway, just thought I'd show you that. Well, I was poking around the 68 the other day, just I ran out of gas to work on the main car, and I thought I'd just look at this real hard a little bit because I hadn't really since it. Uh, that come in the door and uh, one of the things I was looking forward to with this car was not having to dink around with the uh, the old car sheet metal well that went away the other day um, a couple discoveries this this cow you can see is uh, almost completely through here so there's quite a few areas on it that have that situation going on um, the other thing that I found a little bit dismaying was uh, I was looking at these pockets which still have the screws broken off in them for the clips for the windshield trim and then I saw this one it's kind of been bondoed over and then gone so it's always disturbing when somebody does metal work for you and then you see it come through with a little bit of Bondo kind of to sweeten it up. Uh, and so I decided to put a torch to the Bondo to see what was going on about this this windshield bed as far as how well it had been repaired. And surprise, surprise, Bondo does not stick to nothing at all, which that's what that is. That's air. So here you see the pocket I was trying to reveal, and as I get along here, this is pretty chewy. It's pretty chewy over here. So no attempt was made to repair that at all, yet it was bondoed over and a nice little bit of primer was put on it. Here you can see this is pretty chewy, pretty chewy here, pretty chewy in around there. Um, this I could see, um, but... Uh, that's not cool. Uh, the other thing is, the unfortunate thing is, is right now, um, this, these sheet metal parts are becoming unobtainable. And I think the last time I priced out this cow section, which extends from these pinch welds up to here, uh, that piece of sheet metal was somewhere around $350 plus shipping. So not inexpensive. Well, the other day I went on to, to take a look and see what a brand new piece would be. It's... You know, shipped, it's close to $600 now. So that wouldn't, I mean, you'd have to swallow hard and just go ahead and, and get it if you needed it. Um, but the uh, problem is, is they're also out of stock and they're kind of on obtainium. There's a few places that have them, but, um, you know, they might as well put a pirate flag up on those sites. Anyway, curious to see what he did with the roof edge because... Early on in this project, there was going to be a resto mod situation, so the the um, drip rails were shaved off of it. Um, but this is also covered in Bondo, so I'll have to take a look at that and see what's going on there. Uh, another unfortunate thing that was done was the, the end caps, the aluminum end caps, which are dissimilar metals, steel, aluminum, cast aluminum. Um, the, they were mudded in. And um, that's not cool either because I don't know if he glued them on or if he just bolted them on. Either way, you know, the expansion and contraction is going to eventually open up a crack along those two uh, metals that will expand at a different rate once they get out in the sunlight. So I'm going to have to dig that out. I'm going to have to clean that up. When he attached the quarters, you can see the gap is about a heavy eighth of an inch over here and then it tapers down well that's zero there as far as I'm concerned 
and that's less than zero and that's touching um and that's a situation that when it was attached here it should have been it should have been gapped with the deck lid on the car so you had the relationship correct now granted sometimes these uh, amd panels don't fit quite right and they have to be cut and massaged a little bit um, just the nature of the beast of reproduction panels and the worn out dies that they use to produce them but this one clearly is got a gap underneath of it and it could have been shoved over in that direction a little bit further um, I don't know if that would have been enough to correct both gaps but it's substantial enough that it should have been done that way <clears throat> anyway like I said I was looking forward to not having a dink around with that but apparently there's some dinking in my future we also have quite a bit of pitting up in the Dutchman panel over here which some of it's pretty that's a pretty deep one right there I'll have to clean that out and see what I can do about maybe putting a steel patch in the worst of that but uh, anyways you're going that deep that Dutchman panel should have probably been replaced too but we have to deal with what we have now because times have changed and this stuff is very hard to come by unfortunately oh by the way one other strange choice that this uh, guy that did the sheet metal work decided to do instead of replacing the entire door jam he's got a brand new door jam piece here okay he decided to cut it and leave the old door jam up to there i mean it was just he's putting on new quarters there's just a series of spot welds here to replace the entire jam and he didn't do that he he cut it here and just replaced the jam from here down i don't know well, that's crazy i don't know, understand why you would do that but um most i'm going to cut a lot of this out anyway so it's not worth it to because these are no longer spot welds these are uh, rosette welds basically plug welds done with a welder and if i went to try and drill these things out right here and just replace this one piece i would butcher the heck out of the flange over here trying to separate these out now i mean a pinch welds or uh, uh, not a pinch weld but a uh, a spot weld would be easy to, to drill out neatly this uh you don't know how far over he went with the welding and by the time you dug it all out and separated these two panels this flange here would be obliterated so i'm gonna have to leave this metal's not in too bad a shape it's just you got an opportunity there to uh put a brand new piece of metal in here it is sitting here fresh backer double backer on it and everything with the latch plate attached everything's there he takes it and chops it and puts this one piece in here <sighs> anyway okay down here on the floor again um i just wanted to show you this while still had a bit of a high contrast between the red and the, the silver here so you can see what i'm talking about before i spray this with uh, weld through primer at any rate what i have left here is a kind of a cut off j uh, section here in other words it's got a vertical wall and then it rolls out a little bit <clears throat> where i cut it off um, and so now what I've got to do is I've got to close it in from here to here um, and what I'm going to do is I uh, I have a piece of a couple pieces I should say of angle iron that came with the car they're eighth inch thick I was going to put a piece of flat stock eighth inch from here to here to mend this to this but the angle iron will be much stronger because it'll create a little bit more thickness on this bottom web here which is perfect and it also stay, will stay straighter as I try to install it I've already gone ahead and I've trimmed it down in this one section here where it's an inch and a quarter from the bottom of the frame rail to the bottom of what I have left of the inner frame rail on the car um, over in this area over here it jumps down to about an inch and a half which the uh, L channel that I have is actually an inch and a half by inch and a half so it kind of works out fine I trimmed it up to about here and then dropped it down over here and this back here is the uh, where the jack point of the car is so I'm gonna leave all of that I definitely don't want to cut it up 
higher for a quarter of an inch for just a little bit of visual look. So anyway, what I'll be doing is I'll be spraying the inside here with the weld through primer and then I'll be spotting it maybe every inch and a half both to the top and to the bottom. Uh, later on I'll be running some epoxy along the edge to seal it up here and also on the bottom edge later on I will come back and because this is hollow here I will drill some holes in the bottom to let any condensate or any water that gets in here have a way out um, and uh, so I'll show you what I'm going to do next here's those pieces of angle iron or L channel if you prefer it's a 1 8 wall and um, I've trimmed them down the length now I'm cutting out uh, relief cutting these here down to about here so that this better matches the profile I have to deal with uh, along the bottom side there so I have to clean this all up paint it on the back side with the um, well through primer and then uh, install it meanwhile I have to uh, cut that one down to get it ready for this other side okay I just thought I'd show you how uh, this is gonna help to close all this out with this little piece of cut off uh, angle you can see it's going to tie all this bottom in pretty substantially and then it's going to tie it into the frame rail up here and give you a nice uh, structural mend between this frame rail and the parts that I cut out here I'm reintroducing some strength to this area the good thing about using this is now um, it's going to be substantial enough that you could jack along the entire pinch weld hopefully um, and uh, you won't ruin it uh, these cars are notorious for having only a couple of locations where you can jack. You can jack it up, but there's a little triple thick pinch weld uh, somewhere in this neighborhood. And if you have the side skirts on the Challenger, it's got a little cutout. Same thing over here. There's a little area where it's got uh, a specific area where it's tripled up where you can jack. Any place in between, if you hit this pinch weld, it'll just fold up. I mean, it's just these cars are extremely heavy and um, jacking them up on the pinch weld is, is never recommended other than the places where they're located. Now you can see that um, somebody who had this car, I can't see if you can see it from this side anyway, let's see if you can see, okay here's a good example. They jacked it up on this little frame rail extension here which is only a single thickness right here. You can see that they kind of collapsed it here. You can jack up on this, but only at this little area that's doubled up. Uh, the problem is, is if you try to jack up over here and you want to put a stand there, what do you do? Your jack's in the way. Very difficult to get it supported there, so you got to support it way up where there's a vertical uh, strength element based on the um, uh, firewall coming down here. So it's just before you get this frame rail to turn up that you can again support it with a jack stand. But again, if you're going to jack it up from these ram rails, the only place you really can is in this one little doubled up area here where you see these three um, spot welds right there. But hopefully adding this uh, thick one eighth of an inch angle on here will allow for this car to be jacked up from the side um, in any location along the pinch weld. I just uh, was able to get uh, the other side trimmed out and uh, made this cut without having to cut it into sections like I did on this side so I just thought I'd show you what the uh, right hand side of the car looks like at the back of the car at the pinch welds and what you're dealing with in the way of um, the profile and the structure this is the most difficult aspect is to reach this one point here I did it with a combination of vertical cuts through the bottom with some fresh discs so they had the a maximum reach. Finally, I had to free it up with um, a small air saw to get that last little bit. Again, I went with uh, maximum reach uh, with the largest uh, discs I had to go in, level underneath the frame rail here, my new frame rail that is, and cut this along here. And you can see that this is going into the 
wheel tub area right here so I cut in straight across here and then I was able to go up from the bottom this is the bottom side and this is basically where I, uh, I base my trim for the whole uh, pinch weld uh, or the lower rocker I should say and pinch weld as there's um, this double plating under here and uh, this is only a single thickness here I, the double plating is still on the car that's the normal jack point I go alongside of that and I do a straight line that connects where the uh, double plate ends in this direction and that gives me my distance out that I want to be with this pinch weld that leaves the maximum amount of doubled up metal in the area of the jack post anyway I thought you'd like to see what that structure looks like <coughs> why it's a little bit difficult to uh, get it cut out of there neatly go around the other side of the car show, show you what I got there in that area so you can recognize it so there it is uh, cut out of there you actually don't have to cut through these this structure here you just kind of graze the edge of it and you can see the double metal is still on there and that's that plate right there where it's doubled up and then I use that as a guide to give a straight edge to cut the rest of the lower pinch weld off of this car. Anyway, thought you'd find that interesting. Okay, you can see right now that, um, well it's steady here for you, um, that I've got the one, in, one and a half inch by inch and a quarter flange welded on the bottom. I weld it off every inch and a half. And um, what I've done is I've made a mock-up of the 68 rocker, how that will intersect with a straight cut, vertical cut straight through. And you can see that it's about a half of an inch from actually running straight into this piece. So what I'll have to do is create a sheet metal transition for either from here to here or try to leave a little bit more material on here, say a quarter to a half, and then go down the entire length with a pair of uh, flat vice grips with have a three inch wide jaw and just kind of tweak it down and just run it into this so that it meets this and then I'll just have one seam to clean up right down on the bottom there. Anyway, that's the idea. Okay, so that's the right side frame rail done. Um, so we're going to move on to the next stage which involves a, a lot of ciphering. And we've got to go over to the old car now, we've got to make some patterns. Um, and figure out how much of this area we have to trim out. And then we have to figure a way to resecure the dashboard uh, subframe, moving these bolts off of this because this is going to have to be substantially trimmed away, like I said in earlier videos, because of the um, taper of the old uh, style um, door jam. As these go vertically, that one tapers in quite a bit. So, um, you know, this video is going on a little long here, so I'm going to end it here. Um, even though it's just midweek, um, I'll pick up the, uh, the next phase on a, the next video. So anyway, until next time, thanks.